there are many different organizations inside of the appraisers. All right. Now, I will tell you, there is no test question that's going to ask you name for organizations. So that's kind of like some gee whiz information there. So there are two more terms I want to talk about that are slightly get confused with people. So let's go over here and look at this. The first thing that we talked about is this thing called an appraisal. It is done by an appraiser. It will give a value. The appraisal that is completed by the appraiser will come back with one number. It is the value. Please eliminate the word price from your vocabulary because we do not deal in price, we deal in value. And those are different items. So what you have is this appraiser that gives a single value. He will come back and say the value of your property is $240,000. That's the appraised value. Now, as an agent, we get hired to list a property we are going to do this thing called a CMA, all right? A CMA. A CMA is a comparative market value. A comparative market value right here. That CMA can be based on sold properties, which is the most common one because these two down here, current and expired, really aren't true values yet. They're not a true value until the property is sold. So when we do a CMA, we do that, we will come up with, and here's the important key, we come up with a range of values, right? So when your seller calls you and says, hey, Raymond, I want to <clears throat> list my property, meet me at five o'clock this evening and let's list the property. And I say, okay, I'll meet you there in seven hours. And in that seven hours, I now have to do several things. One of them is perform this CMA. So I'm gonna go out and I'm going to search the sold properties. And when I find them, I will then go to my client this afternoon and go, hey, man, based on the comparable sales, your property's value is somewhere between $230,000 and $250,000. We give a range. We cannot give a single value because if we did, that's an appraiser. And we're not licensed to do that. So we give a range of values. And if you remember when we talked about listing, this is where you would then ask the seller, okay, where would you like to start listing the property, knowing that it needs to be in this range somewhere, because that's what all of the sold comps have told me that your property sells for. That is the difference between our CMA or our comps and the appraisal. One gives a single value. We give a range of values. Now, in the heyday of the foreclosure market, that 2008 through 2010 or 11, there were a lot of lenders that were getting to the point where they had to foreclose upon people and they wanted to know the value of the property today. I mean, when that borrower borrowed the money in 06 or 07, they had an appraisal done and that appraisal gave the bank a value, but that value was in 2006, for example. 
Now in 2009, they're talking foreclosure. They want to know what the value of the property is today, three years later. Well, they could have hired another appraisal to do that. The problem is, I told you, that appraisers were charging $400 to $800, and lenders had so many of these going that they really couldn't afford to spend that money. Now, we can argue that maybe they could have because they're making billions, but anyway. So what they created was this hybrid thing called a BPO. A BPO, a broker's price opinion. A broker's price opinion. Think of it as a watered down appraiser. What the lenders were doing were hiring guys like me that were brokers and go, hey man, I want to know the value of the property today. So I want you to go out and pull your comps and do a CMA. But when you're done giving me the range, I then want your opinion on a single value. So they were crossing these two or making a hybrid. They were asking that person to do a CMA, but then they wanted an opinion of a single value. That was called a broker's price opinion. And the bank was just using that as a thermometer for the current value today. <clears throat> There were many different types of BPOs. There was this one called a drive-by. A drive-by literally is where you just drove by the house and you were required to take pictures of the front, of the side, of the exterior, just so that the bank could verify, yeah, that house is uh, there. Now, at the time, there were so many of these going. Oh, back up. And because it was a watered down version, here's the kicker to this. They were paying the brokers anywhere from $40 to $70. So you can see why they were doing this. They had a big saving. They could have hired the appraisal at 400, but dude, it wasn't A, to generate a loan. It was mainly for informational purposes, which allows a broker to do an appraisal. So they were hiring the broker, real estate broker, to do a BPO where they would do the CMAs and give the value. And they were only paying them like 40 bucks. Now, that may not seem like a lot of money that was worth your time, but there were people in my office. Uh, we had one young lady who was doing anywhere from 15 to 20 a week. And she was doing this for about two and a half years. So she was making a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, sometimes more, in just these uh, BPOs. That's not doing any real estate. I mean, she wasn't listing. She wasn't really doing buyers. She was mainly just doing data technical work for the, all these lenders that had so many foreclosures, and she was making anywhere from, like I said, a thousand dollars a week to fifteen hundred just doing these because she did so many of them and a lot of them or all of them required at least a drive by and she would spend one day she would get her list all together she would spend one day and go out and just take pictures throughout the city of the homes and then spend the other three days in the office doing all the data analysis and then get a check okay and there were way bunch of uh, weird scenarios. You think real estate is weird. Do this. Uh, I helped her on one. We went to do a drive-by and I remember driving down the road and looking at the houses and I can't remember the exact address, but it was like blah, 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 13 house here. And then there was a vacant lot, which was, should have been, I think it was like 4015 which was the one that we had got hired to do the BPO on, and then 4017. 
So the two houses and then a vacant lot in the middle. So, you know, we backed up and looked and we're like, yeah, that should be the spot. And it just so happens that there was a neighbor out in one of the adjoining houses. And we stopped and we're like, hey, dude, what happened to that house? And he's like, oh, man, that house burnt down about a year ago. City's already been out and cleaned it up. And we're like, okay. So we called the lender back and go, hey, man, you hired us to do 4015. And the guy's like, yes, yes, we did. And we sent him pictures and we're like, dude, that house is gone. It caught fire and burnt to the ground, according to the uh, neighborhood information. And that house is not even there. And the guy's like, huh. Well, I guess that's what we get for not paying attention. So that was the case of this person was in foreclosure, probably because they moved their house burnt down. They just quit making payments on the house. The lender started foreclosure and then hired us to figure out what the value was. And we told them, look, hey, your value sucks because there is no house anymore. So I had, there were a lot of weird scenarios that happened with that. So let's talk about the appraisal process. So the process is designed that every agent uses the same process. Remember, it's called USPAP. And here's basically on the screen the outline of the process that every appraisal will follow. The first one is going to be one that you may think of and get confused right out of the gate. Because the first thing the appraiser has to do is define the problem. What type of value is being sought? Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, it's real estate, right? Well, do not forget that the appraisal foundation deals with all types of appraisers. The only one that we really get intimate with is a real estate appraiser. And even inside of the real estate world, there are several different types of values that an appraiser may look for. So the first thing they're going to do is define the type of the value. Most of us, when we talk about appraisers or appraisals, we are thinking of what they call a purchase appraisal, right? That's the one that I have alluded to through this whole course where the borrower is borrowing money and the lender says we want an appraisal because it is a purchase of real property. There is such things as a refinance appraisal. If a lender or if a person wants a lender to refinance their property, they're going to have an appraisal on that house again because they want to know the value now. Well, that would be a refinance appraisal. We typically don't deal a lot with those. Why? Because in the refinance process, they don't hire real estate agents. It's just some couple that goes, hey, let's refinance our house. So they call their lender and go, hey, I want to refinance. And they skip all of the mortgage loan originator and the real estate agent because they don't need that portion. So there are refinance appraisals. There are... Um, Property, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Auction appraisals. If the lender wants to auction the house, what's the value going to be at an open auction? So there are many different types of appraisals. And the first thing they need to do is determine what value are the appraiser lurking for? Are they going to be doing a purchase appraisal? And that is going to fall into the scope of work because USPAP may have a different set of criteria for a purchase appraisal than they may have for a refinance appraisal. That's why the first thing they do is define the problem. Well, this appraisal is for the purchase of the property located at 12 Smith Street. And then what the appraisal does generically is gather all of the data that is going to be used in the process of the appraisal. And there are two types of data he is going to look at. One is he is going to look at the general data regarding the property. These are factors that are not located typically on the property. So he's going to look at the region, the city, the market. Is the market declining or is it inclining? 
Are there a lot of other vacant homes around? Are there boarded up homes? Are there REO bank owned homes for sale? These are all the general data that he would collect to use in his valuation. The second type of data he gets is obviously the one that we're going to deal most with is called the specific data. And this deals actually with all of the data on the target property and all of the deal on the subject properties. So like three bedrooms, two baths, 1500 square feet on one acre. That would be the specific data that they are going to use. And he will use both of these types of data inside of his appraisal when he goes to determine the valuation, there will be three approaches. And don't worry, folks, we're going to get to those, okay? He then is going to form his opinion based upon what each valuation method shows. He will then reconcile those three values down into one value, and he will create a final report called the URAR, the Uniform Residential Appraisal Report, all right? That is the report he will actually fill out and give back to the lender. And this on the screen here is the process that all appraisals will follow in a generic fashion. They will do A, then B, then C, then D, then E. And they do that, why? Recall that I told you, all these lenders want continuity or unity amongst all the appraisers so that they feel confident that the value the guy gave me in Montana would be the same value that he would give me in Georgia, 